The Daddy Letters Letter 7 Common Needs Between Men and Women Dear Daughters, Some Christians believe the best path to holiness is through asceticism, austerity, and minimizing indulgence in pleasures of the flesh, but I believe Christians need not be apologetic for taking delight in carnal pleasures. I believe a holier path is gratitude, praise, glorifying God, and giving thanks for these considerate loving gifts from our benevolent designer and creator. I believe God would have us indulge in, derive off from, and experience wonder in everything he made including our human appetites and proclivities toward pleasures. However, we should not allow any pleasure to become an idol that we worship or seek more than the creator of these gifts. Therefore, my daughters, take delight in a mouth-watering piece of chocolate, a hip-moving rhythmic beat, a tender morning kiss, relaxing bubble bath, or mutual sensual massage. God gave us five senses with which to experience his physical creation and enjoy his consecrated pleasures. He instilled instinctive desires and needs into our human nature, and He did not give us all these human attributes to torture and test us, but rather to be pursued according to His divine law and intent. Understanding the human nature that God designed is a powerful tool for managing intimate relationships. The scriptures are a rich source to begin learning about human nature, and through that understanding we can predict how our mates will respond to our words and actions, and we can analyze our own reactions to theirs. It is difficult to build a strong union if human needs are not ministered to properly, Therefore, mates have a moral obligation to reasonably understand human proclivities in general, gender proclivities in particular, and our mates' unique proclivities especially. I have made reference several times to the concept of human nature. But what is human nature exactly? Simply put, human nature is the fundamental dispositions and characteristics, including ways of thinking, feeling, and acting, that humans have naturally. The term represents the essence of what it means to be human. When God breathed into us the breath of life, He also activated our human constitution with all its unconscious instincts. Instincts are the inborn inclinations, without learning, of an organism towards a particular behavior, corresponding clearly to defined stimulus. For example, a wet dog instinctively shakes the water from its fur without being taught, and a husband who is consistently unappreciated will grow resentful. By Adam's fall into sin, human nature became corrupt, although still retaining the image of God. Jesus taught that everyone is a sinner because it is mankind's nature and disposition to sin. Therefore, we are all sinners, and we marry sinners. When we understand this about ourselves, and each other, we will be more careful not to have unrealistic expectations of our relationships, and more importantly, we will not behave in such a way as to become a stumbling block for our mates by denying the reasonable expectations of our mates for kindness, appreciation, affection, touch, and affirmation, to name a few. If we know that it is human nature to resist change, then we are better equipped to deal effectively with our mates when change is needed. When husbands understand the strength of maternal instincts, they are better equipped to give their wives grace when their wives neglect them on behalf of the children. Comprehension of the natural fight or flight response informs us to be careful with accusatory words and off-putting tones when dealing with conflict. Daughters, if you want your relationships to flourish, you have to know and understand the strongest human needs, and ensure your relationship honors and provides these needs to you both. Let me share with you a description of these vital human needs as researched by your mother and me years ago. There are four, and they have been our North Star for keeping our relationship vibrant. The four basic needs are, to live, to love and be loved, to feel important, and to have variety. I will share my insights on each one. The need, to live, is an expression of the first law of nature, which is self-preservation. We want to survive, stay alive, well and safe, be a viable part of our mates' lives and the world, have sufficient income and resources to meet our needs, maintain sufficient strength to carry out the means of survival and recreation, and maintain reasonable control of our lives, futures, and freedoms. This human need explains why it is so important to pick a mate whose goals, economic potential, work ethic, and career choice are compatible with the lifestyle you want. A few ways you can honor his need to live are, 1. Start by encouraging his warrior instinct and expressing your trust in him to protect you. He will think you hung the moon simply because you believe in him. 2. Do not spend above the means he or the two of you are able to provide. If you do you will put him under the ego-killing stress of feeling inadequate to meet the needs of his lady. A man derives a lot of happiness from giving his woman the things she desires, so don't show disappointment over what he cannot provide, 
and especially don't complain about others having more, or going places you can't afford to go. That feeling of inadequacy will pervade almost every part of your relationship, and your own unfulfilled expectations will foster resentment against him. To love and be loved, is the next human need and it involves the innate need to have friends and meaningful relationships. That is why it is important to marry someone who can be your best friend, companion, mutual adventurer, admirer, and lover. To meet this need we want to feel admired, trusted, and needed. Being the social animals we are, we also have a need to be part of a group or team because we not only need to receive love, but also, we need to feel the love we give is accepted and appreciated by those to whom we give it. When we feel connected to our mates and others we thrive. The church is a great community to satisfy the need to be a part of a team, so having a mate that values church is important. It is tremendously fulfilling to connect your intimate team of two, to an intimate team of dozens. 1 Corinthians 13 gives us all the advice we need to make our mates and others feel loved, and what we need from our mates to feel loved ourselves. It reads, Love is patient and kind, love does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. The third human need, to feel important, means we all want to feel valued by people, groups, and teams, especially those that are important to us. This need is so great in us that people have been known to become outlaws just to be noticed and feel significant. Children act out to receive negative attention rather than be ignored. This need gives rise to the class clown, the life of the party, or even the bully. In this world of 7 billion people, we can feel like a tiny organism lost in the singularity of the herd, and that feeling crushes the human psyche. It gives us energy to feel our lives have meaning, and are satisfying greater purposes than working, eating, and sleeping. We have an innate need to be successful and that strong drive can turn us into workaholics, or make us neglect family, friends or relationships. A few steps you can take to honor this need in your man are, as often as possible express how much you value your man and be specific about what it is about him that you value. Be the kind of partner that encourages your man and spurs him on to success. Celebrate wins with him. Be his cheerleader, confidant, teammate, trusted advisor, and advocate. Speak well of him to others in his presence. The final human need, to have variety, is sometimes missed, but it is as vital as the other three because it is rooted deep in our human psyche. We have an instinctive need to try and learn new things, otherwise, we become overwhelmed with boredom and lose our zest for life. I can't explain the psychology, but it just is. We need to be challenged, experience pulse-pounding adventures, get excited, have something to look forward to, and awaken our sense of discovery and awe. That is why vacations and recreation are so important because variety heals, but monotonous repetition kills. We not only want to learn new things, but we need to become competent and expert in new and different areas. This human need feeds on our creativity to supply a continuous stream of novel activities in all areas of the relationship. Sometimes when this need is neglected a relationship can become dull and lifeless, and couples slowly lose interest in each other. Left unchecked, mates can stray into unhealthy or dangerous distractions. Girls, use your God-given creativity to keep everything fresh and new and everything from entertainment, to food, conversation, and intimacy. When you grasp these human needs, it will help you have informed conversations with your man about what you need from him, and help you hear what he needs from you. Self-knowledge is a necessary tool for achieving fulfillment in the human experience. For example, when you understand the importance of variety to the psyche, you won't mistake boredom for falling out of love but instead investigate where variety and novelty are lacking and remediate accordingly. There is so much more to learn about human nature, so put in the work girls. The more you know, the better you can manage your relationship and yourself. But don't stop at learning the elements of human nature that are common to both men and women, but also learn the elements of human nature peculiar to men, and especially the nature of your man. Your mom and I found a little pie shop about 20 miles away and their apple pie is outstanding. We should get together after church and go have a slice or two. I will even pick up the check. Love. Dad.